Good evening, Sharla. Will Emil be getting off of work late again today? He has been getting off late these days, and I wanted to know. Good evening, Annie. He told me he has another meeting to attend, and it might take a while. He will be a few hours late. He messaged me about it earlier. Oh, I see. I've been trying to get a hold of him, but I guess he has been in his meetings. He hasn't been responding to any of my messages. How come you need to talk to him? Is there something going on? Well, I guess I can just tell you since he's not responding. I ended up making way too much food for dinner tonight. There's no way Mike and I can eat it all on our own. Can you stop by and pick up some food for a meal? There's only extra for him, by the way. You won't be able to have any. Oh, okay. Do you need me to come over now? Yes. Is that a problem? The food I make is the best and clearly delicious. I don't want any to go to waste. I want a meal to eat it. I already know that you can't even make a proper meal. Just so you know, a simple peanut butter and jelly sandwich isn't a proper dinner. Where did you hear that? That's not true. I can cook. Oh, really? Because I can tell just from looking at you that you are not capable of much. But at the end of the day, I am much older than you and know what's best. I can see right through you and you are nothing but a child. There are just so many things wrong with you. I don't understand where this is coming from or why you think of me as a child. I have always cooked my own meals. I cook for a meal all the time. I have also lived on my own and have paid my own rent for a very long time. Growing up, my mother taught me how to be independent and how to cook. Is that so? But Emil only really seems to like my food. Every time he sees me, he asks me to make him something. Anyway, I need you to come to pick up the food so that he actually has something good to eat after a long day of work. I wonder why he hasn't been responding to my messages lately. It is so strange. It still says that he hasn't read any of them. Yeah, very strange. But okay, I'll pick up the food. Good. I'm upset because I wanted him to come over today and have dinner with me, but it always seems like he's working. I guess he has been doing well, so they gave him more things to work on. I spent a lot of time making this dinner. Oh, I also ran out of Tupperware, so please bring some with you. Yes, he's been very busy. I'll let him know about dinner and give it to him later, too. Oh, one more thing. Can you also stop by the grocery store on the way here? There were a few things that I forgot to pick up. Can you also pay for it? Mike hasn't given me my money yet for this month. Oh, okay then. What do you need? I need some spinach, kale, and lettuce for a salad I want to make. I also need you to pick up a steak. A steak? Yes, that's right. I know it's expensive, but I'm sure you will buy it for me. I mean, it is really expensive, though. Not to mention that I have to walk to your house, so that's a 20-minute walk. This is a lot for me to carry. And what you're asking for is a bit out of my price range right now. Don't you have a car? Emil and I share the car. He has it for today, so I have to walk if I want to go somewhere. Oh yeah, I forgot. Can't you just pay for an Uber or take the bus? I don't want to have to spend money on transportation, too. I'm already buying your groceries. Do you really think it's that expensive? You really are a country girl. I know it's not crazy expensive, but I just don't want to have to spend any more money than I have to. Instead of steak, can I buy you a chicken? It would be much cheaper and chicken is still delicious. I'll buy everything if that's the case. I'm sorry, but I just don't want to spend a lot of money on food. Doesn't your family work on a farm? Didn't you also grow up on one? You should know what food is best and why I want it. You should also be strong enough to carry it all, too. Can't you just get what I told you to get instead of complaining about it? I did grow up on a farm and my family does work on one, but that has nothing to do with me buying food. You are asking for things that are too expensive. What 
is with that answer. You are so useless. I thought you could at least do this much for your mother-in-law. But fine, go ahead and get the chicken instead. Just know that I'm not happy about this. Um, thank you for understanding. But usually, a wife does much more for her husband's family than this. Helping out their mother-in-law and keeping up with housework is something you need to learn how to do better. Just be grateful that I'm not asking you to come over and clean too. I just keep seeing all of these flaws that you have. Please do something about them and learn how to be a better wife. I am sure it was because you were raised on a farm. I guess you have been hanging around animals too much. It's not like your parents could have taught you proper manners. Please stop. These aren't very nice things to say. Especially when I'm running errands for you and paying for your groceries. You are doing the bare minimum. I can see that you also lack common sense. I'm sure your parents were too stupid to teach you that, though. You are far from being a good enough wife for my son. Sorry that I can't be perfect. Well, anyway, please just go and buy my groceries and pick up Emile's dinner. Also, don't forget to bring your own Tupperware. Understood. I understand. You are leaving right now, right? Yes, I am. I'll try to be there as soon as possible. Then I'll be seeing you soon. Will Emil be home on time today, or does he still have work to do? Oh, hi, Annie. Yeah, he should actually be coming home soon. Ah, I see. He still doesn't reply to any of my messages. It also says that he hasn't read any of them. Can you please tell him to read them when he gets home? Yeah, sure. Also, did he like the dinner I gave him? I spent so much time making it. I would at least like to hear if he likes it or not. Yes, he did. I'm sure he just forgot to message you and tell you how it was. He has been really busy lately. He said it was delicious. Of course he was happy with it. I've been doing all the cooking for him since he was little. He just loves my cooking. I'm sure he feels absolutely starved only having you around. It is not like you can provide him with a proper meal. Well, since you feel that way, how about you teach me how to make that dish? I think Emil would be happy if you taught me. Maybe I will someday. We will see. But knowing you, you wouldn't have the skills to make a dish like that. I think I'll wait to teach someone who is more capable in Emil's future. By the way, are you planning on going to your parents' place for Christmas Eve? Yes, I plan on going home to visit my family this year. Since Emil and I always go to your house, I thought it would be okay if we went to my parents' home for a change this year. I haven't spent the holidays with my family in a while. Is that okay with you? No, it's not. Emil should always be home for the holidays with his own family, not someone else's. I also need you here to help me prepare for the party. But my mom and dad have already made preparations for us. They really are looking forward to us coming up this year for the holidays. Emil has already agreed to this plan and wants to visit my family for a change. But I just don't see why. Emil always wants to come home for the holidays. Did you bribe him or something? No, he just thought that we should spend it with my family this year since we never do. Then in that case, can you tell me how much paid time off he has for next year? If he is missing the holidays with me, then he should make time for me later. It is so cruel what you both are doing. You are both being so selfish right now. Leaving me all alone for the holidays. We thought it would be fine since we have visited you every year. Not to mention that you throw a large party with your family, so we didn't think you would be all alone. But about Emil's paid time off, I'll have to talk to him about it. He has been really busy with work and might not want to take the time off. Don't you think it is good that he is working a lot and doing well? Yes, that's true. But he should always make time for his mother. Anyway, we have already decided to see my family for the holidays this year. Emil is excited about it too. My parents remodeled the guest bedroom for us and everything. But I'll let Emil know how you feel about this. Yeah. I'm sure you did a lot of convincing to get him to go with you. 
I just don't understand why my son had to marry a girl that comes from a poor farm family. But I have faith in him. He is still young and has plenty of time to remarry. What's this about remarrying? Oh, sorry. Did I offend you? It just looks like my true opinions about your slipping out. I guess I'll just come out and say it. I wish my son didn't marry some country farm girl whose family has no money. It's disgusting. I'm sorry? I wanted my future daughter-in-law's family to be rich and well-off, and most definitely not living on a stinky farm. Plus, your family lives out in the middle of nowhere. Everything about you and your family is just wrong and not what I wanted. I'm sorry that my family and I don't live up to your standards perfectly, but you have the wrong idea about it all. They actually live in a really nice area. If you'd like, you can come to visit one day and I'm sure you will change your mind about everything. Absolutely not. They probably live right in the middle of some field. I'm sure there are a lot of disgusting bugs crawling around. There are probably snakes, frogs, and other creatures too. I just can't associate myself with things like that or people like you. It's gross. I see. That's too bad then. It is really beautiful. It doesn't matter. I hate nature, bugs, and animals. I'm not happy with the way this conversation turned out. Don't you ever mention me coming to visit your parents' place ever again. Just thinking about it makes me sick. I can already imagine how the farm in your house must smell. Um, okay then. I understand. I won't try and convince you to come visit my family anymore. I didn't know you disliked nature or animals that much. There's still one more thing I need to talk to Emil about Christmas Eve. Tell him to reply to my messages as soon as he gets home. I'd rather speak to him privately and not through you. Okay. He will be home soon, so I'll let him know. He should actually be home any minute now. Okay. Please do. Charla, what time do you plan on coming over on Christmas? I'm not sure how long it will exactly take. It depends on the traffic. It could be a while. Since my parents' place is a couple of hours away, the soonest I'll get there is probably around noon. Just why couldn't both of you agree to stay with the tradition at my place? The whole family plans to be here around 11 a.m. I don't see why you had to go to your parents' place. Can't you get here earlier? I need your help cooking for everyone. This was the agreement. We spent Christmas Eve with my parents and see you on Christmas Day for the party. And I didn't know you were planning on having me cook for everyone this year. Well, now you know. I can't do it all by myself. I need your help, so just leave your parents' place earlier. Okay, then I'll help. What time do you want me over there by? Okay, good. I need you to be here 9 a.m. at the latest. I also need you to do the shopping because I won't have time for that. You can do that for me, right? You want me to go shopping too? It will already be difficult for me to be there at that time as it is. I also don't know how the traffic will be. You'll be fine. Just leave super early in the morning. I'll send you the grocery list. So I need you to be here with the groceries right at 9 a.m. How long is that list? What kind of food do you need? Turkey? Yeah, the works. Turkey, ham, mashed potatoes, stuffing, you name it. But don't worry. I'll help you cook and prepare some of the food. Then I'll leave the rest to you. Um, you know there's literally no way I can buy that stuff Christmas morning and then cook it in time for dinner. I really think you need to get that stuff yourself and start prepping at least the day before. I'll try my best to get there as soon as possible to help. Although I can't promise to be there right at 9 a.m. Just when I thought you couldn't stoop any lower. You're actually refusing to cook Christmas dinner. I think we need to be realistic with our expectations here. Fine. But trust me when I say that Emil will be hearing about your attitude. I have no doubt that he will. Then, right when you get here, could you set up the snacks and drink table? Then would I be too presumptuous in assuming that you will be available to at least serve the food? 
I think I can do that. You think? Then once everyone leaves, I need you to help me clean up. Speaking of cleaning, you might as well just stay over because there is going to be a lot of cleaning to be done. That seems like a lot for just me to do. Can't you also ask Emil and Mike to help too? You'll be fine doing this on your own. You can at least do this. I'm only asking you to do the bare minimum, considering you're shirking your cooking duties. All my husband and Emil do is work. I'm sure they would like a break. Us women should at least be able to provide food and clean up the house. I don't mean to be rude, but the role of women has changed. We don't just cook and clean. I also have a job too. In my family, everyone works and helps around the house. Did you not read my messages properly? This is how it works in my family. I don't care how you were raised. The men stick to working and providing income while women cook and clean. Really? You seem to be very old-fashioned. The women in my family work. My dad helps with the cleaning and cooking, too. Oh, I see. We have very different viewpoints on household positions, don't we? But that's because your family is poor and uneducated. You all run on a poor mentality way of living. I guess that's how farm folk are. Anyway, this is how we do things in the city. Be here 9 a.m. sharp. No excuses. I don't care how many mud pits you guys get stuck in out in the boonies. We'll do our best. My whole family expects to be catered to the moment they get here, which is 11 a.m. There is a lot of preparation that needs to be done, which is why I'm telling you way ahead of time. And don't forget about the shopping. What? I thought we agreed that you should do the shopping in advance. Yes, but you could at least pick up a dessert, don't you think? Oh, I see. I'm not trying to make any excuses, but won't all the stores be closed that day? I know a place that will be open. It is actually pretty far from my house, so you will have to drive past my house and then come back. I'll give you some gas money, but it won't be much. Don't worry about it all too much, though. You'll be fine as long as you wake up super early. You understand everything, right? At least I let you know what needs to be done two months in advance. I don't want to hear any complaining later. No, I understand. Thank you for telling me now rather than later. I will tell Emil all of this too so that he knows the plan. I already messaged him earlier, but that boy never replies to me. It's like he's ignoring me. How rude. I'll talk to him about this the next time I see him. Oh, I see. Anyway, I have some shopping I need to get done today. I need to go now. I'll be in touch. Oh, wait a second. Where are you going shopping? A place right near my house. Why? Then can you pick me up a pound of chicken and some broccoli? I also need some eggs and olive oil. I'm running out. I need these things in order to make dinner tonight. Please bring them to me as quickly as possible. I'm already hungry. Yeah, sure. Since Emil has the car again, I'll be walking, so it will be a while. I don't want to feel rushed. I'm also assuming you want me to buy these things for you as well? Yes, thanks. I'm looking forward to my dinner tonight. It is also just so much better when someone does the shopping for you. All I have to do is cook. Chicken and vegetables sound so good. Yeah, sounds great. I'll see you soon. Sharla! How much longer are you going to be? Everyone is waiting on you. Just what in the world are you doing? My family is thirsty and trying to have a good time, but you're ruining it. We need our drinks. I'm not coming back. I'm done. What did you just say to me? I sent you out to get more beer. How hard of a task is that? Come back right now. You keep sending me out to get things for you. I know your true intentions and I'm done being your servant. What do you mean? You are being ridiculous. I have already went back and forth shopping at different places for you three times already. 
I'm your son's wife. I'm not your maid. You are just making things difficult on purpose for me at this point. Really? How childish of you to assume something like that. You made me leave my parents' place early Christmas morning so I could come help you. After going through all of that trouble and leaving my family to be here, I'm still not good enough for you. You still won't give me a moment's rest. Why do you keep treating me like this? You pushed me around and put me down. Oh my, you are really upset over a few simple tasks. If you have a problem, then you can just leave for good and never come back. I already did. I'm never going back to your house or doing errands for you ever again. What about Emil? He is still here. Are you planning on leaving him behind too? Because I'm okay with that. I'm sure he'll catch up with me. He didn't agree with what you wanted me to do, but you're lucky I'm nice enough to do these things for you even after how you treat me all of the time. Once I message him and tell him what's going on, he will be leaving too. There's also a good chance that he won't be going back either. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and act selfish and confident. You think you are so high and mighty. You are a disgrace. You think you know everything about my son, but you are wrong. An incompetent person like you should have never married into my family. Hmm, okay. We will see what happens then. You! I can't believe this. Emil and Mike are at your parents' house, right? They have to be. Tell them to come back home immediately. I can't have them there. They will for sure come back smelling like a farm. Why are you messaging me instead of asking them yourself? They both never check their phones or respond to my messages. They always have their phones on silent mode or something. It's just so rude. Okay, I understand. That's just too bad then. Just tell them for me. This is unacceptable. But they just told me they don't want to go back home. They said that they are sick of you and your constant complaining. What are you going to do about it? Excuse me. This isn't funny. They both are very stuck on the fact that they aren't going to come back. It looks like you finally crossed the line. Did something happen? They are both saying how they are done and don't want to speak to you. It's because you never have anything nice to say and are bossy. They both really said that. I'm sure this is all happening because of you. Because of me? Are you seriously blaming me when both your son and husband are claiming that you're the problem? What exactly did I say or do to make you think I'm the problem? This is all happening because you decided to leave Christmas dinner and pout over something so small. I had to ask them to go run the errands for me and then you called a meal. After that, they both haven't been home since. I'm sure you said something to Emil and he convinced Mike to drive him to your parents' place since you took the car. Just what are you scheming? I simply told Emil what you were doing to me. And according to Mike, he is sick of taking orders from you. I'm sure they both decided to leave for that reason. You don't understand how rude and bossy you are to your own family. This is all happening because of you. No, you had to have said something strange to both of them. This has nothing to do with me. I'm on my way to your parents' house now. I will talk some sense into them when I get there. Do you want to know why Mike and your son don't respond to your text messages? Well, it's because you are rude, annoying, and controlling. Every time they answer a phone call or text message, you always ask them to do something for you. If they don't follow your orders exactly, it's never ending complaining and yelling. They are sick of you. They both have me blocked. Yes, that's right. They are both fed up with your behavior. Emil has also blocked you on all of his social media accounts. If you don't believe me, look up his name. I bet you won't get any results. This is why Emil never replies to you and you have to message me to get through to him. Understand now. Is that really why I can never get a hold of them? But why would they do something like that? I don't understand. I'm his mother. I command you to tell them to change the settings on their phones right now. I have a lot to say to them about this. No, 
Why should I? You seriously don't understand the situation at all. They chose to do that to you on their own for this very reason. They are both adults and you can't command them to do anything. They set their own boundaries with you. The way you boss everyone around is not okay. We are your family, not your servants. I don't boss people around. But I am the family matriarch. If I need someone to do something for me, then they must do it. You literally yell at them at any chance you get. You also make fun of me and my family since we own a farm. You also make fun of me as I am out running errands for you and paying for your groceries. You have never treated me like family. You also mentioned several times that I am not a good wife. That's why I had enough and left to spend the rest of the holidays with my own family, who actually love and appreciate me. I'm sure that's why Mike and Emil ended up leaving too. You married into my family. Everything that I have said to you was nothing but constructive criticism in order to make you a better person. I have put up with you for so long. Even last year's Christmas was a mess because of you. You stuck to Mike like glue and followed him around everywhere. Do you understand how weird that looked? You looked like a little puppy in love. Are you serious? I was only with him and Emil a lot of the time because Mike loved hearing my stories about the farm. It was really nice talking about my family history since no one else ever asks or cares. What made it awkward was you. You never realize that the way you act is what causes people to be uncomfortable. Don't you dare put the blame on me. You are the one who makes me act out the way I do. Last year, Emil and Mike were supposed to go out and get some more drinks but forgot because you kept hogging them. You need to stop checking out my husband. What the hell are you going on about? You have a lot of insecurity issues because that's not how things were. You know that Mike is on the younger side. And then after I came up to you three and gave you all a piece of my mind, you talked back to me. You made a scene and were clearly pulling for sympathy from everyone. You were horrible and everyone in the room was disgusted with you. The only horrible person making a scene and screaming false accusations was you. People left and felt uncomfortable because of you. All you have done is make crazy accusations about me. Mike is clearly bothered by how you treat him and so is Emil. Your ego is blinding you from the truth. Liar! Stop speaking to me like that as if you know everything. Everything you have just said is false. Plus... I have to take charge when it comes to Mike because he's an idiot. Same with Emil. They both don't know when to shut up and do what they are told. And you need to realize that saying those things to the people you love is not okay. That right there is exactly the behavior I'm talking about. You need to stop commanding them to do everything for you and telling them to shut up. I think you should properly apologize to both of them when you get here. They both have good hearts. I'm sure a simple and genuine apology and change in your behavior can bring them back. Get on your knees if you have to. They said this is your last chance before you lose them forever. Huh. You better stop messing with me. All three of you. As if I would apologize for doing nothing wrong. Mike's parents were good to you, right? Yes. Why are you asking me this out of nowhere? And you said you were an only child and your family wasn't that great to you. I know his parents provided everything for you. They gave you that house you both live in. Plus, they treated you like you were their own daughter. They spoiled you and you never had to work a day in your life thanks to Mike and his family. Everything you have is because of Mike's parents. If you lose him, you will lose everything else that you have. You need to shut up. What do you know? Did you forget who you're talking to? I'm the boss here. Once I get there, you are all going to be in so much trouble. I don't think so. I think you need to prepare yourself for what's about to happen. You missed your last chance to apologize and it's all downhill from here. Mike and Emil aren't the only people here. My parents are too, and they won't let you do a single thing to us. You need to compose yourself or you will be the one in trouble. No one likes what you have been saying. We are all reading this whole conversation. My father is especially upset with you. Compose myself? Oh, please. 
Who does your father think he is? Whatever. I'm done with being angry. I just need the three of you to hurry up and get back here. That's too bad. The three of us don't seem to ever be going back. Ever. Why would we go back when you're acting like this to us still? What? I'm acting just fine. It looks like Mike has taken a liking to my father's work. They have been talking a lot these past few days. Mike has always had an office job, right? He loves the farm and nature here a lot, and he wants to stay and work here instead. He is tired of the same thing every day, and he doesn't exactly like his job. Isn't that great? He will finally be doing something he enjoys. He likes the farm and the nature out there. You mean, he really wants to stay and work there? Yeah, and I know how much you hate that stuff. You and Mike are complete opposites. He is set on staying here. He is done with office work and would rather retire and do some farm work for my father. Oh, looks like he just signed a contract with my father. It really is happening. There is no way. You have to be lying to me. You just want to see me worried. Well, believe it because it's happening. He is also going to divorce you. A divorce? You missed your chance to apologize. It looks like he's fed up with how you treat him and is ready for a change. All you ever do is push him around. Wait a second. I have been nothing but a good wife to him and he knows it. I even gave him a wonderful son. Why would he dare to even try and divorce me when he knows he can't live without me? He is useless on his own. According to Emil and Mike, you were quite the opposite. You always needed their support and you were never in the right mood to actually support them. Emil wants to stay here as well. That way he can stay near his father and get to know my parents better. We are going to sell our house too. What about me then? I was told that you have plenty of family and that they should be able to help you in some sort of way if you ask nicely. They are not worried about you at all. They are done with you. Their advice to you is to be kind when asking for a place to stay or for any financial support because you wouldn't want your family to see how you really behave with that attitude of yours. Otherwise, you will be on your own. Mike has also hated your family for so long because all they do is gossip and he can't stand it. Emil and Mike are ready to leave you and your family behind. I'm sick of listening to all of this. They are making irrational decisions and not thinking straight. Just tell them to come home. Now. No, they are staying here. Give me a reason to believe any of this. The two of them have started blueprints for a house. My family owns several large plots of land and they don't mind sharing. My father also built our house and he is going to help Emil and Mike build one. As if I could believe something like that. How can a poor family like you afford to do that? Whether you believe it or not, my family makes a lot of money. Mike is also going to use all of his retirement money to build the house. This is all happening. Retirement money? Is he serious? He is out of his mind. He needs to think about this properly because half of his retirement money was supposed to be for me. Too bad. He is using that money for himself as he should. He also plans to work on our farm to keep himself busy and make some extra cash. He is old enough to think for himself. Emil feels the same way. He is going to quit his job and work on the farm too. My parents pay extremely well. Their heads are clearly up in the clouds right now. They can't do this. There is just no way my husband is leaving me and my son is going to choose some stinky farm girl over me. They have always loved living in the city. I'll give it some time. They won't survive longer than a week out there. They can't handle being poor. Stop being so damn rude. You don't even know what you're talking about. My family isn't poor. We have our own brand of produce that we sell in grocery stores nationwide. Remember all the grocery shopping I did for you? The brands of vegetables that you buy are all from my family's farm. We make over $300,000 a month. You have a very twisted idea of farm life. $300,000 a month? You must be joking. Your family is just country farm folk. There is no way I'm going to believe a ridiculous number like that. 
How about you stop believing in stereotypes because you are clearly wrong? My family is hardworking and we are self-made. Mike will be a great help to my father. We are always looking for extra help. It's time for you to wake up. Pretty soon the truth is going to hit you hard once you are left all alone. To just do this and leave me all alone. How dare they? Such traitors. They are not traitors. They are just done with your attitude. You did this to yourself, but it seems like you will never believe that. If you would have just properly apologized when I gave you the opportunity and changed your attitude, things would have been different. You probably would have gotten a second chance, but now you are going to have to live the rest of your life on your own. There's nothing for me to apologize for. I have done nothing wrong. I was the perfect mother and wife. They are the ones who don't understand everything I have done for them. I cooked for them and gave them a roof over their heads. And I will never live a poor, dirty country life. I understand. What you did was the bare minimum for them. Enjoy living by yourself forever. I'm sure it will be difficult since you haven't worked a day in your life. I suggest that you start looking for a job. You won't have much time. That will be easy. Tell Emil and Mike that they will be lost without me. And tell them that if they want to run home crying that I won't be there for them. Okay, I will, but I don't think they are going to care. They already seem happy. I wonder how much you will have to work in order to keep yourself from ending up homeless. Mike's family is already working on selling that house they gave you. You have 60 days to get out. You will have to rent an apartment and pay rent and utilities all on your own. It isn't cheap. Don't you dare talk to me as if you have won. I am strong and independent. I will have no issues working and finding my own place. Wow, that's amazing. Living by yourself is difficult these days. Anyway, Emil says goodbye. Make sure you prepare yourself. Good luck. Mike will see you in court. Annie never showed up at my parents' house, but then I already knew she was bluffing. She doesn't have the guts to cause a scene in front of my family. Mike and my father became good friends and soon finished planning the blueprints of the house. Emil and Mike really enjoy doing farm work. They find it peaceful and fun. My family has always been wealthy, and we have beautiful plots of land and a large house that we built together as a family. Annie didn't seem to understand any of it. After Mike and Annie's divorce went through, Mike felt a huge weight lift off of his shoulders. He was free at last. Annie, on the other hand, broke down crying and begging for forgiveness, but no one cared. Emil was happy for his father, too. Years of torment were finally over. Annie was given 60 days to remove herself from Mike's house. She struggled to find a job and a place to live. This was all new to her. She begged me to help her, but I blocked her number without replying. Her family refused to help her as well because she couldn't ask nicely. She did this to herself and whatever happens next doesn't concern us. The three of us are finally living the happy life we deserve on my family's farm. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more content.